name is David Ruggiero and I'm Deputy Principal and graduate of Blackfriars from 1992 when we didn't have such a grand building. Friends and I used to sit what, in front of what used to be the Masters building and battle dust and cold winds and heavy rain and bright sun, but it's magnificent what we have today uh, that we are about to open. As we begin, we will begin in the traditional manner of acknowledging the Ghana people that we are gathered on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pay respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people today. We also ext extend that respect to the other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations peoples. I now invite you all to please be upstanding and join in in a very quiet, COVID-safe manner to yourself with the opening hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Thank 
know that you are God's temple, and that God's spirit dwells in you. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. The word of the Lord. The response is, O oh God, let all the nations praise you. O oh God, be gracious and bless us, and let your face shed it let your face shed its light upon us. So will your ways be known upon earth, and all nations will make your safe. Let the nations be glad and exult. peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God still give us his blessing till the ends of the earth will be here. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, it is a great joy and pleasure for me to be here with you today. Though yesterday was the feast of St. Thomas, I'm sure he's uh, big enough to, uh, to scope over a couple of things. Thinking about the celebration today, my thoughts turn to the feast of next week, the feast of the presentation of the Lord, celebrated each year on the 2nd of February. And it comes exactly 40 days after Christmas. And I was reminded of a story that goes like this. That just after midnight, on the 3rd of February, 1943, an act of extraordinary unselfishness by a group of people became something of legend of martyrdom and of sacrifice. The army ship Dorchester was torpedoed by the Germans just south of Greenland that night. Its passengers and crew had 25 minutes to get off the boat. As 902 people went for the life jackets, it was quickly discovered there simply weren't enough. Of the 13 lifeboats, as you might have guessed, few functioned. In the ship's final minutes, Methodist senior chaplain George Lansing Fox, Rabbi Alexander Good, Dutch Reform Minister Mark Colling, Catholic priest John Washington, were helping passengers pay for the vessel. Then all of a sudden, four people appeared, all of them without life jackets. The chaplains quickly gave up their ambush and went down with the ship, perishing in the freezing waters. The survivors saw them locked arm in arm, praying and singing the naval hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save, just before the ship beneath the waves. It was a night as dramatic as the sinking of the Titanic, but without the blockbuster movie to record the drama. 
think about that story, because we can immortalize them because of their bravery, of their sacrifice. But I also think about what went into their lives to form them that they could make such decisions. They presented themselves and offered themselves completely for the well-being of others. And the feast of the presentation of the Lord presents the baby child Jesus to God, his heavenly Father, in the temple of Jerusalem for the salvation of the world. It's a very interesting feast because the way of the Holy Spirit is always close to the inspiration in Luke. The old and pious and spirit-filled Simeon and Anna had been waiting in the temple, waiting for the revelation of God's salvation. They too had been formed to be people who would expect that. Not just by happenstance, but by deep hope. Simeon, who was described as a righteous and devout person, obedient to God's will, lived in that expectation. His moment finally came, the now, and explains the whole of his life. It wasn't just in the moment, but it was in the now. And that made all the difference. When he takes the precious child in his arms, he learns, not necessarily through any reasoning, but through the gift of grace, that this child was actually the promised Messiah, the consolation of Israel and the light to the nations. Simeon recognizes Jesus as the Lord's anointed one. And in his wonderful prayer of blessing, he promises that Jesus is meant to be the glory of Israel and the light to the nations. Anna, despite her advanced age, found a new beggar and began to speak to everyone about this little child. It's a touching image. Two young parents, two elderly people, brought together by Jesus Christ. Here's the one that draws us into communion. Here's the one that allows us to do extraordinary sacrificial things, such as our four famed chaplains. It is the inexhaustible bond of that one which overcomes every occasion of self absorption, solitude, and sadness. As we celebrate today this wonderful building, we also think of that which has motivated it and that which it is there for. Ultimately, to draw us into communion, to be people such as those that we heard about today, Anna and Simeon, about those four chaplains, about our own lives as well. And I'm sure you've been reflecting in this lead up until today about our own story in this place as well. Where there is love, there is joy. And the authentic love comes from God himself. He offers us his word this day, which illuminates our path and continues to offer us the bread of life, which sustains us on our journey. This was the love that motivated Thomas Aquinas, who not only sought the truth, but lived it, and allowed others to enter into that communion. May all those who pass through this place become those who delight, like Simeon and Anna, in the Lord Jesus being amongst them, that their long-awaited hope has been fulfilled, that they recognize that God is faithful. And in the service of God and neighbor, no matter how insignificant that might be in people's lives, may we become as they did, instruments of the Holy Spirit. We might be used too to make Christ known to others. 
and God's great plan of salvation. God so often makes use of the ordinary. God used Simeon and Anna. God used Thomas Aquinas. God wishes to use us. Yet the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals the presence of the Lord to us when we are receptive and eager to receive him. Let us then, dear sisters and brothers, be open, open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit within us. What this place, what this building, what above all this community calls us to be and allows us to be, and to recognize the indwelling presence of God in us, Emmanuel, and in others. May we always respect that dignity and allow that transforming grace in our world to not only transform us, but especially the poor. May God continue to bless that spirit that has brought about this day, and may that spirit continue to transform us in the image of the living God. Let us stand for intercession. Lord God, you are the font of all wisdom, the source of all truth. Grant us your blessing so that we may come to know you in all that we do. We ask for our Lord's blessing on Archbishop O'Regan. Father Anthony and our Dominican communities, and on all church leaders, that we may continue to guide us with wisdom and love. For this we pray. Let us pray for the students of Black Friars. May we always follow in your ways and learn to reach out to others through the generosity of our friendship and time. For this we pray. We pray for our staff that they may strive to be spirit good leaders, who is in the world. For this we pray. We ask for a special blessing for the parents of Black Boys for the contribution of their support. Provide and support us as we deepen our own faith and faith for them. We pray for the community and friends of Black Friars. May we work together with the parents and the staff of the community to make God's kingdom more visible in our world. For this we pray. We pray for the strength and courage to welcome the change in which life imposes and to trust in God. Through our faith, may we bring comfort and peace to those we meet. For this we pray. God of wisdom and love, you understand our every need even before we ask. Show us your goodness in answer to these prayers so that the benefits of this new facility may be reflected in lives of goodness and truth. Now, together, we pray the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom Seat. Now, have the blessing of the Dominican crosses, which have been told have been uh, manufactured on site due to the uh, wonderful technical ability of, um, of the uh, group here. So, um, well done, they look uh, stunning. Lord God, in your kindness, hear the prayers of our school and wider communities. Today, we dedicate the Aquinas Centre. If less and open, 
connected today to the education and well-being of the present and future students of Blackfriars and to their growth in faith, hope and love. May this school always be a centre where staff and students, together with the whole school community, still with the words of truth, search for wisdom that guides the Christian life and strive wholeheartedly to stand with Christ as their teacher. May these crosses be blessed. And may all those living, all those lives bring them to the school, find hope and purpose in these symbols of life, death and resurrection of your son Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you one God forever and ever Amen Thank you. 
Lord, show you the way. Amen. May Christ's eternal wisdom teach you these words of truth. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, the blessed light, always enlighten our minds so that we may learn what is right and good and in our actions pray about what we have learned. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you very much, Archbishop Patrick, for uh, blessing our building this morning, our refinery centre. Having asked you to uh, sit down, I'm now going to ask you to stand. <laughs> and uh, sing with gusto the national anthem. Thank you. 
and welcome. Archbishop O'Regan, Archbishop of Adelaide, Father Anthony Walsh, members of the Dominican community, the Honourable Rachel Sanderson, Member for Adelaide, the Honourable Steve Regans, Federal Member for Adelaide, Mr Dennis Ralph, Chair of the South Australian Commission for Catholic Schools, Dr Neil McGoe, Director of Catholic Education in South Australia, David O'Loughlin, Chair of the Black Friars Board, and other distinguished guests, including members of the school board, board subcommittees, principals of our Dominican schools, and principals of diocesan schools in the community, and companies who have contributed to the building of the I give a warm welcome to our students and staff who are joining us this morning, and a warm welcome also to Father John Neal, longest serving principal of Black Friars. Who's watching the blessing and opening on live stream from Sydney? Good morning, Father John. Today marks a special occasion in the life of our school. The Aquinas Centre is the first major standalone building at Blackfriars since the building of the John Lindsay in 1980. There have been numerous excellent extensions, renovations, and Education Revolution in 2008, the Early Learning Centre 2013, and recently renovations and upgrading of the John Neal Gymnasium 2018 and the Materials Design Technology Building in 2020. So the opening of a new standalone building is a cause of much celebration in our community and also much to reflect upon. What does the building of the Aquinas Centre say to each and every student at Blackfriars? Simply, that you are important. You are important to yourself, to your family, to your school community, and to society now and in the future. The Aquinas Centre confirms that your learning is important. We want you to thrive as a learner, to be fully alive, to have every opportunity to grow as a person in prayer, study, community and service, the four pillars of our Dominican school. The design of the building makes a statement that we want you to be a forward-thinking learner who strives to seek the truth, the very tasks of knowledge, and apply the truth to your learning and to your life. A young man who cooperates and collaborates with his peers and with teachers. A person who engages in dialogue, problem solving, finding solutions to complex issues and problems, real world problems. A young man who engages with technology for positive ethical purposes and uses technology to research, discern, ponder, propose solutions and effectively communicate with others. Most importantly, we want you to further develop to be a confident young man with a pathway to the future and a belief in yourself that you can make a positive difference in the world. As principal, I am confident in you and I trust in you that as students of Blackfriars, you want to be the best person you can be. You want to grow into the best adult you can be. You want to take responsibility for your learning, have a strong voice and ownership of your learning and how you best learn. The Aquinas Centre and all of our facilities are here to assist you on your journey as a learner and your quest for personal excellence and happiness. And what does the building of the Aquinas Centre say to our Blackfriars community? Once again and quite simply, the opening of the Aquinas Centre demonstrates the commitment of Blackfriars to provide the highest quality education for boys in our quest to be the best school for boys in Australia. Today's opening is the completion of the first stage of the master plan and a statement of intention and commitment to transform the school facilities over the next 20 years. 
The symbolism in and around the Aquinas Centre also commits our school community to see Jesus at the centre of life. This is shown by the triptych at the foot of the staircase when you enter the building. The Indigenous artwork by local Ghana artist Alan Sumner reminds us that we are on Ghana land and we are committed to be a voice for reconciliation with our First Nations people. The words veritas, the search for truth, prominent as you walk on the pathway to the building, is a reminder of our quest to search for the truth in all things, leading to a deeper understanding of God and our universe. Today is a special day in our community. I would like to thank everyone who has contributed to the design and building of the Aquinas Centre. This has been a collaborative effort of many people and from the beginning, a most enjoyable project. The result being a quality educational facility that has delivered on an educational vision of how young people best learn in the 21st century. Importantly, the project was on budget and completed five weeks ahead of schedule. Our deepest appreciation to consulting architects, Swanbury Penglades, your team for master planning and for the design and supervision of the building of the Aquinas Centre. Lucid Consulting and CPR for engineering services, Ryder Levitt Bucknell for cost consulting, Partec Construction and Interiors and your team, our builders, for a fabulous building and for the landscaping works. And I'm sure you'd be justifiably proud of, of your work. Lead all future thinking for provision of cutting edge technology, solutions and equipment. Green edge furniture and woods furniture. I hope you enjoyed working on this project as, many, as much as we have enjoyed our partnership with you. I thank the chair of the board, Mr. David O'Loughlin, the building subcommittee of the board, the finance committee and the board for your astute guidance and stewardship of the project from its inception. I particularly thank our business manager, Mr. Jared Lay, for your professional contribution in managing the plethora of nuts and bolts and minutiae of such a detailed project. Thanks also to our Director of Development, Mr. Patrick Kelly, for organising the liturgy and opening ceremony today. And thanks to our senior leaders, Lewis and Mitchell, for your participation this morning. I thank Father Anthony Walsh and the Order of Preachers for approving the business plan for the building of the Aquinas Centre and for your ongoing support for Black Crimes. Finally, I thank Archbishop Patrick O'Regan for blessing and opening the Aquinas Centre and all guests for being here this morning and sharing in this wonderful occasion. I now ask Father Anthony Walsh, Tri Provincial of the Order of Preachers, to address our gathering. Grace Archbishop O'Regan, distinguished guests, and particularly today, I'd like to uh, call out uh, Mitchell and Lewis as representatives of the student body for whom the school exists, not only now, but also into the future. Today we officially open and have blessed this new centre of learning at Blackfriars dedicated to St Thomas Aquinas. And we might ask ourselves, with such a modern centre with its avant-garde architecture from the pens and ideas of Swanbury Penglaze, built as we saw inside with the high quality uh, by the builders, Partec and their subcontractors, why place this modern centre of learning under the patronage of St Thomas Aquinas, a man of the 13th century? It seems perplexing and odd. Yet St Thomas is the patron of schools and universities, of teachers and students, for the whole church, and that is no accident. Not only is St Thomas one of the great minds of the Western world, in his own life helped to usher in a new way of understanding how we both learn and teach, something which has roots in the more ancient philosopher, Greek philosopher Aristotle. And to understand this, we need to think of the one who is to learn, the student, 
not as an empty vessel to be filled up. For if we have this view, then we quickly view students as simply having a lesser dignity, a lesser role, as their empty vessels to be filled. For St Thomas, the learner, the student, can only learn in a way that is in accord with their own way of learning, their own way of understanding. And immediately I think we can see how in this way the dignity of the student is not lessened nor questioned. The student is the centre of the learning, but the way that matters are presented must take in account every and each student in their uniqueness, created as they are in the image of God. St Thomas knew this very well himself personally, having taught many students face to face himself in the great medieval universities of Paris, Cologne, Bologna and Rome. His writings reflect this in the question and answer format that he presents philosophical and theological problems with generally three objections to his own solution, which he subsequently It is my hope, Fred, that at Blackfriars, every student is recognised for their innate dignity, that each student's learning recognises that. Naturally enough, learning is about stretching ourselves, so this is not an excuse to slack off, to lie on the beautiful lawns here, for that would be to deny your own dignity. Finally, to the teachers of Blackfriars, who are the very catalyst for every student to come to understand the subjects they study, what is placed before them. St Thomas is also your great patron, recognising the very challenge that it lies in presenting material in such a way that every student can come to learn and understand and seek the truth. May God abundantly bless the students and staff of Blackfriars with the gift of the wisdom that the Holy Spirit gives in Christ Jesus for learning and teaching. May Mary, our mother, seat of wisdom, pray for you in this endeavour. May St Thomas intercede for you in the great opportunity, the great benefit you have here of searching for the truth at Blackfriars. Thank you very much, Father Anthony. Now I invite Archbishop Patrick O'Regan to address our gathering and formally open the Aquinas Centre by drawing the curtain on the park, although this has happened several times already with the wind today. But we will have that, that formal moment, I'm hopeful, where that can occur. So, Archbishop. Distinguished guests, above all the student community, I'm very conscious at the moment uh, of my predecessor. Uh, we are mourning his death. But I'm sure that um, he'd be looking down upon us today. Uh, with a real sense of um, wonder and delight that uh, this step has been taken and uh, taken so beautifully. So I invite you to continue to pray for him, but uh, I acknowledge uh, his presence and uh, great love for, for Catholic education and all its wonderful dimensions. So I simply echo the uh, previous uh, two speakers and am delighted that... Um, as incarnational people, we need uh, things to help uh, store a wonderful gift of knowledge and put that into action. We do that because we also are surrounded by beauty. One of the great things of uh, the Drew Aristotle was also beauty as well as truth. Well, we see a wonderful intersection of beauty and truth in the building behind me and uh, Hope you get a, a good chance to have a look around there. Uh, it is, is marvellous. So congratulations to those who had the inspiration, courage to begin the project, and those who thought it about our builders and architects and everyone else. But above all, the challenge now to, uh, to see what happens within that building, that great work of education and transformation. 
So congratulations and uh, without further ado, I'd like to declare the building to be open and uh, we're now ready. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, now I've asked Lewis and Mitchell to come forward. We have some gifts uh, for our uh, uh, special guests this morning. Uh, for some of our special guests, and I'm sure we'll go straight to the pool room. Uh, as uh, Rachel Tate said the other night, and she received the uh, Australian of the Year award. So I'm sure uh, Dr. Neil Lewis will go straight to uh, your office or an office in particular. Um, first of all, we have. Uh, the portrait of Thomas Aquinas here, which is the portrait that is actually uh, in the building as a reminder of the naming of the centre. Uh, so a gift to uh, Father Kevin and the Priory. Um, so if Father Kevin or a member of the Priory could come forward. Father William, thank you. And receive the, the portrait of Thomas Aquinas on this momentous occasion. Thank you very much. Uh, a, to the order itself, to the Dominican order. Father Anthony, if you could uh, receive a gift from yours there. Uh, Mitchell has that one. Okay. To Catholic Education, Dr. Neil McGoran, if you could come forward, please, and accept a token of our appreciation. Being here and for support, if you could to get to Black Rise. And uh, Archbishop O'Regan, uh, please come forward and accept uh, a token of our appreciation. But that brings to an end the formal proceedings this morning. Uh, thank you very much all for being in attendance. Uh, well, it, the formal opening proceedings but now everyone is invited to come across to the Aquinas Centre. Uh, students are in there learning, I believe. Uh, I'm sure they are. And but don't don't hesitate, please, to engage with our students. Um, the boys are always up for a conversation, um, and I'm sure they'll be delighted uh, for you to move around the centre uh, freely. Uh, there's a morning tea upstairs, uh, but you're more than welcome to engage with the students. Uh, and to have a good look at the, the facility and, and enjoy the facility. And, uh, and are obviously free at whatever time you need to leave uh, to do so. So thank you very much for being here and come across to the centre. Thank you.